Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Burke County Board of Commissioners free agenda meeting for Tuesday, July the 6th, 2021. Hope everyone had a good Independence Day holiday and looking forward to a new week coming on down. Welcome. We have every one present except Commissioner Taylor. Do we know from him, Madam Clerk? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Taylor called and he is spending time with his family at the Taylor Family Reunion. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll remind you to please silence any mobile devices that you may have so that we don't get a lot of noise during the meeting. And I'll ask you to activate the microphone at the podium when you come to the podium to uh, speak this afternoon so we can hear you and get a good recording of our meeting. All right, item number two, approval of agenda. Gentlemen, you've had uh, the agenda for review. Uh, I will note that uh, the addition of consent item number nine, reappointment of Hickory Regional Planning Commission was added. Hopefully you've seen that. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Scott. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. That's all of us, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Item three presentations. This is uh, from the health department introduction of new uh, local health director. This is a placeholder for our regular meeting. Uh, as you recall, our county manager has been uh, named as interim health director for the next few days until the uh, newly appointed director arrives on the scene. And so we'll look forward to introduction to him on uh, at our regular meeting <coughs> in July. Any comments you want to make there, Mr. Manager? No, sir, that's fine. Thank you. All right, thank you. Item number four, scheduled public hearings. We have several public hearings to, to hear this month. First one will be Community Development Zoning Text Amendment ZTA 202 and public hearing. This will be presented by Shane Frisbee, our Interim Planning Director. Shane? Afternoon. Afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Shortly after the Board of Commissioners June 15th regular meeting, the Community Development Department was made aware of an issue with the newly adopted County Zoning Ordinance. While the County Zoning Ordinance was formally adopted at the meeting, it did not contain the recommended additions and changes from the Planning Board. Upon learning of this issue, Community Development staff conducted a review of the adoption process and confirmed that all required procedures were followed and all legal benchmarks were met for the adoption of the Zoning Ordinance. The error occurred between the planning board meeting and the commissioner's meeting when the agenda packet was not updated with the recommended changes approved by the planning board. Ultimately, the board approved the earlier edition of the new county zoning ordinance as shown in the agenda packet. This does not affect the legality or enforceability of the newly enacted zoning ordinance, but it does mean that some of the language is out of sync with the intended changes and some minor clerical updates. The community development department did not up update the agenda packet with the recommended changes approved by the planning board and accepts full responsibility for the mistake. The department consulted the UNC School of Government on what could be done to rectify the situation. Staff was informed that because the planning board had already voted on the intended copy of the zoning ordinance, the board of commissioners could amend the county zoning ordinance to reflect what the planning board had approved. The amendment may only contain the changes between the two documents. However, the, this amendment presented before you also includes a few proposed changes recommended by the county manager and clerk. The department has prepared a list of all the text changes between the two documents for consideration of adoption by the Board of Commissioners. And a quick comment about the changes proposed by the clerk and the county manager. The intent of that is to clarify some of the language in Planning Board and Board of Adjustments to be in concert with what the intended um, number of seats are and just clarify some things. Um, the thought being that this is a better version of uh, what the language was, makes it clearer what the intent is, resolves any potential issues with that, and instead of presenting um, adoption of language, uh, we would are suggesting that we update it to the clearer language in the document. Thank you. Gentlemen, any questions for Shane on this matter? Thank you. 
Shane, in reviewing this, um, all the red that we see here, uh, I, if I understand correctly, are suggested changes uh, by the clerk and manager. And I'm taking it that some of these other mark throughs are things that uh, didn't make it from the planning board into the, our previous agenda. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the um, the document I uh, presented as Exhibit A has um, updated or added font in red, and that would be the changes between the uh, planning board uh, version of the ordinance and the one that's currently adopted. So that was all the text that the planning board recommended to change. Strike throughs as well um, for planning board. The language presented um, or suggested by the clerk and county manager are highlighted in the document, and they are um, for the sections, Article 8.16, um, the Board of Adjustment, and um, Article 8.25, Planning Board. And those are the only two sections that have anything that would be different from what was approved by the Planning Board, and it's just clarification on, on a couple small things about number of seats on the board just to make it clear what our intent was. Mr. Chairman, if I could just add one thing. On the planning board and board of adjustment, there's a lot of red. Just because we showed everything the way it was, it was just easier to take it all out and put it all back in and show you the changes that way. It's really not that bad. Only the highlighted gray parts are the new parts. In, in relation to the short-term rentals, uh, and, and we had a lot of discussion on, on some of these items uh, during the previous pre-agenda and, and our regular meeting, uh, did, did we make some change or adjustment uh, that related to number of guests that could be on the premises, not necessarily in the, at a short-term rental? Did that, am I recalling that correctly or? Um, uh, let me pull up the, there are the only changes that um, we had made as far as is events, um, with, that would be section 5.4 events. It's um, the language that was approved by the planning board in that version says this includes uh, short term rentals shall not be used to hold events. This includes parties, weddings, reunions, and large gatherings that exceeded the occupancy limit of the dwelling or permit. Um, that has been brought up as something that um, we, we had discussed as possibly amending down the road um, and looking into further to not. Um, prohibit, say, a situation where if I'm renting out a property and I would like to have my in-laws come and have dinner with me, the intent is not to prevent that from happening. The, the intent is to say, well, you're renting out the property, you're not supposed to be using it to hold large parties of 20, 30 people coming over and that. So we want to um, look into that language as we move forward to make sure that it's not, um, that, that it's um, being enacted in a way that that is our intention. So that's one that what we're suggesting is bringing up to what was in the planning board, uh, which includes the and large gatherings that exceed the occupancy limit of the dwelling or permit and continuing to monitor that um, with the person who brought it to our attention um, uh, from the public to make sure that it is being um, enacted in the way that, that is our intention. Okay. I, I was. I knew we had a lot of discussion or some discussion on that item. I couldn't recall if we had chosen to wait and act on that later, or is that the way everybody remembers it? I think that's what we decided is to wait later. Sorry, wrong but I think it was what we decided to wait later and take a look at it. See, th there's going to be complaints, obviously, from a particular group of people who are going to complain about every everything that happens at some of these other places. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that when my neighbors on the lake drive their boat over to my dock and we go down and cook hamburgers is not a party. And uh, I think some of the other people think it is. So it, it's, a, it's a conflict, but I think we're proceeding in the right manner, see how many complaints we get from it. 
address it and then if we have to modify this we, you know I think that's the time to do it and, and see, I'm hoping the neighbors will try to get along probably ain't gonna happen <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that that's one of the things that may happen and everybody can see this is not as bad it, this is a great start I mean the whole ordinance is good so and that this was the I, if I recall correctly, Jennifer, this was about the only sticking point we had was that one thing, right? Yes, that was a major one with yeah. one of the um, okay. inhabitants of that area. All right. Any other questions, comments on this item? Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. I, Go ahead. Give me one, one, one more second. I want to make sure I understand up in, in the uh, summary where it says that Staff was informed that because the planning board had already voted on the intended copy of the zoning, the board of commissioners could amend the county ordinance to reflect that the planning board, what the planning board approved. Did the planning board approve what the county manager and the clerk wants? Uh, the answer to that question, sir, is no. And that's why we're specifying that separately from that. It okay, is, are we okay doing that? My next question. My understanding is that it's the board's prerogative to make Thank changes you. as we go through. That's good. That's all I need to know. And just, just out of curiosity, <laughs> explain the difference between uh, rental duration maximized. It um, was ninety days. Now it's eighty nine. So I was just, I was just curious what, what the reasoning for shortening that from ninety to eighty nine. Not that I object to it. I just. Uh, um, Jennifer, would you like to? expand on that please that's because um, after 89 days then it goes into another category it's another tax bracket so short term is 1 to 89 okay and then after that it goes into another category that makes sense thanks Jennifer. Other Thank questions comments all right here and then this item will remain on the uh, public hearing schedule without objection. Item number two, Community Development Zoning Map Amendment ZMA 2021-02 and public hearing again presented by Shane Prisby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, in 2005, the Venture Capital LLC petitioned Burke County to rezone approximately 243 acres of land off of NC Highway 126 and Gwaltney Road in Linville Township to a parallel conditional planned mixed use district. The petition also included a master development plan for the five phases of the development. Um, the rezoning and development plan was approved with conditions by the Burke County Planning Board in October 27, 2005, and by the Board of Commissioners on November 1, 2005. The final plat for phase one of the subdivision was approved by the Planning Board in October 2006. Development of phase one took place between 2000, 2000, 2007 and 2008. Um, and this was during the recession that I'm sure we all remember. Um, for, for the most part, the recession effects remained in Burke County until late 2011 and 2012. As such, the lots within phase one of the Hawksville subdivision were and have remained stagnant with few exceptions. Venture Capital has since sold off some of the land with the original um, platted as future phases of the Hawksville subdivision. Venture Capital and other majority landholders of the remaining future phases of the Hawksville property holdings now wish to sell off those parcels. Because these parcels are being sold to several <coughs> individuals, companies not related to the Hawksville subdivision, Venture Capital, High County Lumber, and Morganton Federal Saving are petitioning the county to rezone those parcels from the planned Residential Mixed Use Parallel Conditioning District, or PRMUCD, and remove the approved zoning standards and conditions under the original zoning map amendment 2005-06 rezoning as stated within section 9A13 of the zoning ordinance. This um, rezoning request is to primarily rezone the parcels to an R1 district, with the exception of two parcels being general business and one being PRMU. These would be consistent with the Burke County Long Range Plan um, and with the character of the area providing some commercial modes as identified by the three-way supply and fire station. The planning board voted um, to approve this recommendation to the board six to zero. And I would entertain any questions you may have about this. All right, thank you, Shane. Any questions on this matter? Uh, 
uh, Shane, just for clarification, this rezoning, how would it uh, differ from all the other zoning in this subdivision? Mr. Chairman, it would be consistent with um, different parcels in the area. Um, the majority of the parcels are going to the R1 zoning, uh, residential one zoning district, which as you see on the north and different sections are consistent with that. Um, originally, all the parcels were zoned as planned residential mixed use, PRMU. Um, one parcel has requested to stay as PRMU to, um, they, they weren't 100% sure what they wanted to do with their parcel, were considering possibly doing boat storage, which is consistent with uses and that. Um, they wanted to keep that option open, um, and that would be consistent with what the parcel was previously zoned and also other um, parcels in the area. Uh, same thing with the two parcels um, requesting general business. Um, we have the three-way supply area identified as an economic node for um, the lake region. So it's consistent with adjoining parcels and also the intent um, of that and the character of the area as a whole. Um, just up the street on 126 from this parcel is another PRMU parcel that is doing boat storage as well. Um, and to my knowledge, that hasn't been an issue for anyone. There haven't been any complaints about it. Um, so we feel that it is in keeping with the characteristic of that, similar to adjacent parcels. Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Hearing none, this item will remain on the public hearing schedule. Item number three, community development uh, zoning map amendment of Z in May 2021 03 and public hearing. Again, <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Staff has received a rezoning request from application from Tyler Campbell to rezone a 1.23 portion of one parcel of land totaling 9.86 acres. This request is to rezone the property from its current residential R2 uh, zoning district to general business GB zoning district. Um, the applicant has a, um, a tree removal service and is intending to develop the property um, for that business. It is in keeping with the character um, of the area. It is a secondary growth area uh, just beyond the Morganton city limits. And there are some other parcels in the area that are zoned general business, um, including a gas station. Uh, the, keeping in conformance with our long range plan, um, the planning board voted on this six to zero and approved to recommend this rezoning to the Board of Commissioners. Thanks, Shane. Gentlemen, any questions on this item? Hearing none, this item will remain on the scheduled public hearings. Thanks, Shane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This brings us to item five, consent agenda this afternoon. First item on the consent agenda is uh, Board of Commissioners designation of voting delegate for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners annual conference. Uh, gentlemen, you've uh, had this item. Any question? Uh, I plan to attend. Uh, who all plans to attend, Madam Clerk? Uh, John, everybody? Okay. Uh, we can also designate an alternate to member. I would suggest the vice chair, if uh, unless there's problems with that. You okay with that? Okay, all right. So uh, we'll go with myself and Scott uh, as uh, designated voting, if that's uh, agreeable with everybody. Hearing no complaint, we'll leave that as in that order without objection. Item number two, clerk, appointments of reappointments to animal advisory board, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> In your packet um, at your desk, um, you have um, updated materials for the <clears throat> appointments or reappointments to the Animal Advisory Board. Seat number two, um, we have some terms expiring July 31st on the Animal Advisory Board. Seat number two represents veterinarian, and that is occupied by Dr. Linda Shakowski. Seat number four, at Lodge large pet owner is occupied by Debbie Hawkins, who is currently the chair of the advisory board. 
Um, in June, the commissioners added seat number six for a breeder and um, in, in lieu of one of the uh, foster rescue seats and seat eight was added as an at-large large animal owner. Um, we have not received an application from Dr. Schakowsky, um, so I have written that up to either reappoint or to remove her. I um, was hoping to have heard something from her by now, but I believe that it's probably her, her intent not to reapply. Uh, and we do not have any other applications on file for this seat. Um, we have three applications on file for the um, at-large pet owner. So the requested action currently, unless we get other applications, is to either reappoint Debbie Hawkins or appoint Felicia Cobb or Denise Smith to seat number four for a two-year term ending July 31st, 2023. Um, we now have an application um, for a breeder from Liz Boyd Oliver. Um, so the requested action is to, assuming we get no other applications, to appoint someone or Miss Oliver to seat number six breeder for a two-year term ending July 31st, 2023. And the, we do have one application on file for the large animal owner that was received from um, Miss uh, Tamara Robinson. She is the Director of Animal Assisted Therapy at the Riddle Center. Um, although she works with horses you know, in her full-time job on a daily basis, she does not currently own any large animals, but that is the only application we have on file at this time. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, gentlemen, you've heard this information. Any questions or comments uh, on any of these uh, applicants? You might uh, take opportunity to, uh, uh, if you have a veterinarian, uh, you might suggest uh, that we look for that if it uh, seems likely that Dr. Schakowsky may not uh, come forward. Uh, and also, if you know uh, some large animal owners that might uh, uh, be interested or would serve, you might mention that to those folks, uh, and I suppose we could allow an exception. We can consider that uh, as part of our meeting if, if need be at that time. Uh, other comments on this side? Mr. Chairman, did we decide what we wanted to do maybe about adding the foster, another seat for foster rescue? I thought what we decided was we would go ahead and seat this board and let them bring those recommendations back with good with their next round of recommendations for the remainder of the ordinance. Um, one more thing I failed to mention, Mr. Chairman, is since we have multiple applications now on file for some of these seats, we will need to move this to your decision item. Right. Okay. Questions? Comments? All right, here and then this item uh, in totality will go to decision or part, however you wish to do it, I guess would be okay. Okay. All right. Item number three, finance, acceptance of the American Rescue Plan funds. This will be presented by Margaret Pierce, our finance director, Miss Margaret. Yes, sir. The American Rescue Plan Act awarded funds to Burke County in the amount of $17,575,650. Per NCGS 168-17.1, uh, the board is required to accept these funds and delegate authority to the manager to execute any contracts or agreements on them. Um, we are still waiting on final information. They are telling us July 16th is their deadline to give us exactly what we can do with these funds. Um, so at this time, we still have some thoughts, but we aren't willing to make a plan until we know what we can really do with it. We don't want to spin our wheels headed in the wrong direction. So we do not have a plan to present to you at this time. Um, the funds are included already in your budget. You've approved them. What we're asking is that you ratify the acceptance of the funds in the amount of $17,575,650 and delegate the responsibility to the 
for any necessary agreements on behalf of the board to the county manager. All right, thank you, Margaret. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a technicality we need to deal with. Uh, we will plan to uh, look at those rules once we get them and see where we're headed. Uh, have we received all the money or part of the money? Half. Half the money. They'll send the other half 12 months after the first, so we should, we received it mid-June, so we'll receive the second set. The other $8 million, uh, should be next June. So the plan is to, to run this through our normal budget process or a separate no, sir. It's going to be a grant project ordinance. The state came back. That's one of the changes that's been made since we even received the funds in June. So they changed their mind on how they wanted it reviewed and book kept. So we'll actually be bringing you a grant project ordinance to approve when we have the projects to put in there, hopefully for the August meeting. Uh, I think uh, County Manager Steen would like to have a, a, a few meetings, uh, perhaps with uh, some of the board, to determine the projects that we feel, uh, make sure we're headed in the direction you would like us to once we have the information on the projects. Um, there's a couple things we've talked about that we've already found out may not be allowed, so we're having to kind of rethink. We know that water sewer is a huge piece of this. Uh, improving all of our HVAC does look like it's going to be eligible, so we really want to look at all our building air. Of course, what we're doing at the HRC building is not improving the air quality as much as it is controlling the temperature of the air. But the rest of our buildings, we need to really evaluate what can we do to make sure that the, it's being filtered correctly, that we're doing everything we can to keep it circulating appropriately. If we need to redo zones, all that should be allowed to make sure that we have the freshest air possible for our citizens and staff in our buildings. So we'll be probably presenting a, a chunk of money to go toward HVAC renovations in all buildings. Um, water sewer, it looks like uh, pretty much sky's the limit. We're excited that redoing a bunch of our old lines is going to be getting our sewer pump stations and other water pump stations up to speed is all going to be allowed. Technology improvements on the alarm systems so that we know if there's overflows immediately and how to handle those should all be right now they're all okay so we're really going to look at what we can do to get that system uh, to where it should be to make sure it's the best water and safest conditions that nothing's overflowing into creeks or anything like that um, but again so far since it first came out may 23rd what was the final rules may 23rd has been updated five times as of last week once back to back, two different, 23rd and 24th of June. It was, I mean, so they're, they're doing just like they did with our, our other funds, our CARES Act funds, that they're changing the rules daily. But what they're telling us is when they give us the rules, the ultimate end, July 16th, they swear they're not going to change them again after that. And they go, hold my breath. <laughs> but at least we should have a much firmer idea of what's allowable and not allowable certain things to general county buildings they're saying are, is, is going to be allowable but they won't define yet what that means other than it can't be for example we were looking at some things at the courthouse and they said because court backups are theoretically temporary that would not be allowed so we're having to rethink okay there's some other options we can do to maybe make some improvements there for the overflowing courts because really we need that regardless of the backup so. We're, we're hearing from a lot of uh, nonprofits that that they are believing that some of these funds will be uh, possible for, for their purposes. Any thoughts on that? So there are five primary authorizations, allowable expenditure categories. The first is support public health expenditures by funding COVID-19 mitigation efforts, medical expenses, behavioral health care, and certain public health and safety staff. The second is to address negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency, including economic harms to workers, households, small businesses, impacted industries, and the public sector. The third is to replace lost public sector revenue using this funding to provide government services to the extent 
of the reduction in revenues experienced due to the pandemic. I can already tell you we don't qualify for that. We've looked at those numbers and based on the formula, we're not gonna qualify. Four is to provide premium pay for essential workers, offering additional support to those who have borne and will bear the greatest health risk because of their service in critical infrastructure sectors and invest in water, sewer, broadband infrastructure, making necessary investments to improve access to clean drinking water, support vital wastewater and stormwater infrastructure, and to expand access to broadband internet. Now the key there to remember is this is from the federal government. We have specific state laws that prohibit us from investing in broadband. And the state has been clear to stress that to North Carolina entities that just because this says we can invest in broadband does not overrule the fact that the state prohibits counties from funding broadband. <coughs> so we are looking at that. Where the nonprofits could come in is that um, second one, negative economic impacts um, caused by the public health emergency. There are, uh, I think, some entities looking at that, that they could do some grants. The key to those grants will be we are still 100% percent responsible for who they give it to, how it's spent, that it qualifies, that everything about it is. So we will certainly take that into consideration, but our concern would be we're putting the county on the hook but handing the money to someone else and hoping that they follow all the rules. And it's such a, I think the last set of rules was 140 pages. It, it's a lot for them to follow and we don't know that it's our best choice to put our nonprofits in a position of having to pay back funds when it's so complex and their organizations may not be designed to understand and be able to keep up with all of this. Okay. Any questions, comments on this item? Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Mays. I was just going to say, gentlemen, until we get the final rules, it's all maybes and what ifs. Uh, my thoughts were we, we get the, the rules mid-July. We have a week, 10 days to review that with staff, uh, develop a memo or some sort of summary to the board and give them some ideas. But then sometime in August, I've talked with the clerk, we're, we're looking at some possible dates, I think in August, that we would have a workshop to go over all this and see what, you know, thoughts you have that maybe you've had input from citizens or other groups about projects possibly and for the board if we need a second workshop after that uh, until we get to where the board is comfortable and we identify what we want to do and we believe it truly complies with the the, the latest version of the federal rules um, then we'll go forward and we have until December 2026 I think for the projects to be completed so uh, we got a little time, but uh, and we want to do, that, do things right and allow for, for good input and consideration and, and uh, hopefully the best possible outcome for our community with funds that are available to us. And to add to that, I want us to make sure we keep up because you and I attended the same, same meeting last week where the governor made his recommendations for what the state money might be and there's a lot of matching funds. Mm -hmm. So we, I want to make sure we don't obligate ourselves to a project, tie it in, take the minutes, and then we don't get the matching funds because that's kind of open-ended. So let's make sure that we make sure that we understand what the, what the governor is saying because it was rather broad in, in a way. Yes, sir. It was, was not clearly defined either. There's conversation that we could use those and give you some of our money as matches, but it wasn't clear what percent of match or how that would work or would you apply or is it a given. So again, we're really, really trying to stay on top of um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of last week, there were six different online things on this. One was four hours, the others were much shorter. So uh, Scott Cook, the Deputy Finance Director, and I are trying to do every one of these um, either together or if I can't do one or he can't do one, we're doing them anyhow. So we are really doing our best to stay on top of this. There's a full blog site on the School of Government that we're both linked into. We're seeing those updates um, as they come out. We're, we're really trying hard. We have other staff uh, Peter sent me something that he saw to make sure we are getting all the information. We encourage anybody to see something, feel free to send it. We'd rather see it twice than not at all. But it's a tremendous amount of information out there. And 
and rules and regs. You think lawyers wrote this stuff? It's so bad. Well, Carol Malonzi knocked me down when she decided when she didn't decide when she uh, made the presentation about counties can't do anything about broadband because it's against state law. Now there is legislation in the General Assembly as we speak trying to be passed to get. The ironic thing about it is municipalities can play with broadband, counties cannot. So if the legislation does get passed to change, that may give us a little bit of latitude to, to do something with broadband. And I'm really disheartened to hear that there's not much we're going to be able to do as far as the broadband side. There are things to take a look at, but we have to be very, very specific with what we, what we do with it. <coughs> Other questions, comments? All right, hearing none, this item will remain on consent agenda. Item number four comes from finance also, Master of Plan Space Leads Assessment Contract. Ms. Margaret. As we spoke before, we realized uh, two years ago that our big focus really has to be on getting our buildings in order. And then the next thing you know, we meet in February of uh, 20, and then next thing you know, the pandemic hits and everything kind of goes a different direction. So we really got refocused on this and met with, we put out our RFQ to find different companies that do this. We had six different companies submit uh, proposals to us. We had a selection committee that included Brian, the Steen County Manager, myself, Mark Delahant, the General Services Director, Scott Black, the IT Director, and then Brian Neeft, our purchasing agent. He'll be kind of our point person on this, so we wanted to make sure he was in all of it. Um, Scott was there because a lot of this is going to depend on what you can do infrastructure IT-wise with buildings. Mark, because of the physical part of the buildings. We're also doing a space needs to determine from a people perspective. What space do we have in buildings? Are we using it the best for our people? Which buildings are we going to outgrow faster than we think? And this kind of, we looked for a company that could tell us all of that. So in reviewing it, Mosley Architects has experience with this. They're currently finishing up a study. They did Davie County last year. They're going into a study with Johnson County and Yancey County, I believe, is the other two. They had the most experience at doing this and one of the few that really had a focus on the space need piece, not just the facilities part. This is really two things we're looking at. What are, what buildings are we going to outgrow or have we already outgrown, such as maybe the HRC, and what, what can we do with the space we have to best use it. Um, so we felt good. We interviewed them. They came for a site visit. We spent an entire day going through buildings with them so they could make sure they really understood our buildings before they committed with us because we all want to make sure it's successful. Um, we did negotiate with them on pricing. The pricing they gave us is $185,000. This should be done within six months. We hope it's done within four. We will also actually focus them on some of our roof and HVAC needs so that we can push those frontwards in our budgeting and in our conversations about the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, we reviewed uh, recommendations from other counties that have worked with them on the similar plans and felt like this was where we needed to be. Question? Questions? Comments? All right, hearing none, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Item number five, General Services, Solid Waste Division, LaBella Associates Annual Services, presented by Mark Delahunt. Mark, afternoon. Uh, yes, this contract is uh, a contract that's reviewed annually for annually for approval in uh, LaBella Engineering formerly Joyce Engineering, which y'all may be familiar with, has been doing business with the county for over 20 years that I know of. They assist the county with maintaining compliance with the Division of Solid Waste. Much of the contract includes actual field work, such as water sampling, landfill gas monitoring. In addition to the field work, the uh, contract includes submittal of that information that they've gained in the field to the state in the proper format that they require. And I, uh, like I said, they, they've done a good job for us, kept us out of hot water with the state, so uh, I'd like to see us move forward with this. All right, thank you, Mark. Gentlemen, any questions on this item? This is an item we see on a regular basis. Uh, it is a necessary 
part of the operation at the landfill. Any questions, comments? Mr. Chair, just one question, because <clears throat> they do do a great job, and we've used them uh, for quite a while. Is the cost roughly the same as it was last year? Have they gone up much? I can't recall what we paid. Uh, the, the requirements vary somewhat based on what the state requires. Some stuff we test for or whatever, maybe once every three years. So it does vary. Okay. I'm not sure what it was last year. I should have been prepared with that, but I wasn't. But, That's uh, okay. But, yeah, it, but it, it does vary somewhat. Yes, sir. Based on what the state requires year by year. Other questions? Ma'am? Mark, this is a one year. So yeah, if, that if is correct. for some yes. reason we want to change directions next year, we're only for one year, so it gives us uh, a little more leverage if um, we're not thinking we're being treat treated quite right. I have no reason to believe that we aren't, but uh, again, this is on a, a one year, so if, if uh, later on we, we see some things a little differently, we can take a different path. That's correct. Like I said, they've done a good job in the past. I was, just, I was curious. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, if you give me just one second, I can tell you what we paid last year. It was $195 last year's contract. Uh, $191. $191? Oh, okay. okay. So their scope of work obviously was yeah. more last well, year. An, another little add on part, yeah. So it's probably the higher number. Okay. Thank you. Other comments? All right, hearing none of this item will remain on consent agenda. Thank you, Mark. Item number six comes from partners, a joint resolution of the boards of county commissioners of Burke, Catawba, Cleveland, Gaston, Iredell, Lincoln, Rutherford, Surrey, and Yadkin counties, and approval of amended bylaws, and this will be presented by Tara Conrad. Tara, afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thanks for allowing me to come and give a, a brief update. I believe you, you have in your packet a copy of the resolution um, Chairman Britton just read out to you. Um, as some of you are aware, we have had several counties ask to realign with partners. What that will mean is partners will serve as the local managing entity and managed care organization for those respective counties. As such, we will need to increase the size of our um, board, partners board, from 21 members. We need to increase that to allow each county to have a representation at um, our partners board. By agreeing to that resolution, then you, you will agree to that. If our, if our current board I'm sorry, <laughs> this is so loud that it's throwing me off. Now, I'm going to turn it off if you don't mind. So, without this resolution, we'll be capped at 21 members. So, our new counties would be competing with our current counties for a seat on our board. And by signing and agreeing to this resolution, we can increase the number of seats and um, county representation. North Carolina statute allows for an increase in membership if all of our um, county boards of commissioners agree to that. And if the Secretary of Health and Human Service agrees to that, and if our total population in our service area is over 1.25 million individuals, and we will meet those requirements. So with that, I will entertain any questions. Okay, thank you, Tara. Gentlemen, any questions on this item? This, this is an item that the Partners Board has, has been uh, reviewing for some time we've had uh, folks wanting to come into this uh, LME and uh, that speaks well for our organization and at the same time we have given thought to any negatives that might come along with that but we, we believe that uh, all that's been addressed and things are moving forward and in fact uh, we may not be quite to the end of, of the desires folks to join us, but uh, I think maybe we're closer. Tara, would you agree? I, I think so, yes. Any uh, questions, comments on this item? 
All right, hearing none, thank you, Tar. This item will remain on our consent agenda. Item number seven comes from the tax department, tax collection report for June 2021. This will be presented by our tax administrator, Mr. Danny. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, looks like we've had a pretty successful year. I think everybody would agree with that. Uh, if we look at our property tax, our collection, property tax is 101.52%. Motor vehicle tax is 120.22%. Uh, current year taxes, we're at 103.28% collected. Delinquent tax is 116.26%. Uh, late list penalty, 154.32% collected. And when we look at the property tax versus the levy, not the budget, but the levy, we're at 98.57%, uh, and I believe that's the, the greatest number that we've had in the years that I've been doing this. All right, thank you, Danny. Any questions for Danny on this side? One, Mr. Chair. Uh, Danny, on the, the numbers look great. I, I was just curious on uh, under motor vehicle tax, 120%, what's the reason for that? I don't, that's one that, uh, you know, with everybody registering new vehicles or, uh, the values going up on vehicles has probably had a lot to do with that. Uh, as you know, vehicle probably prices are probably up what 10 percent, and I'm sure that affects us overall. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> All right, here now this item will remain on the consent agenda. Item number eight tax release and refund report, Danny. Okay. We, the report shows $4,186.72 on the release and refunds. Uh, we had $2,242.55 rebuild, which gave us a net release of $1,944.17. Excuse me. Uh, we had $239.49 in actual refunds. Uh, in vehicle tax, we had $149.60 in refunds. Danny, just as curiosity, uh, where or who is LR Acquisitions? Do you know? Yes, that was some. That was sort of a strange one. We had uh, some property uh, in the Waterside subdivision that was uh, sold and uh, subdivided into lots. And if I'm not mistaken, there the attorney, the closing attorney on that, uh, used the wrong plat. We had two different plants recorded. One recorded a lot that, let's say it was 100 feet deep and, up, and revised 200 feet deep. So we used the wrong thing. It took us some time to get that done. But as we had to map it, bill it, as what we had, what was recorded, and a year later it gets corrected. And so that's what caused those releases. Does that make, does that, you understand? Yes, thank you. Any questions, other questions on this item? Here and then, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. And item number nine that was added, the clerk uh, reappointment to Hickory Regional Planning Commission. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is a request to recommend that the Hickory City Council reappoint Robert Weaver to the Hickory Regional Planning Commission. Um, he's served one term, is willing to serve another, and uh, has been a good member. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Any question on this side? Seeing here now, this item will remain on the consent agenda. This will bring us to item six, items for decision. I have one item. At this time, of course, we'll add a second item for the uh, Animal Advisory Board, but uh, Community Development Remediation Authority requests for compliance of condemnation. And this will be presented at case number 72-19, presented by Steve and Bradley. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, all right. I'll can you guys, anyway. can you turn the volume down just a little bit? We, we're getting a lot of... Uh, uh, echo and maybe I'm talking louder than 
than Tara was, but no, she's hot today. I, yeah, she, she's hot. If we can turn it down just a little bit, that's all right. That's all right. We'll go with what we got. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Commissioner and uh, members of the board. Uh, the item for you that we bring is one that hopefully uh, you you all remember uh, from several months back. It's in regards to property on Ridge Creek Drive. Uh, that an appeal was filed uh, for the order as handed out by the chief building official Steve Holden. Uh, it was for property that is a delinquent uh, and, and nuisance home uh, that caught fire and burned. Uh, the appeal was for additional time to be granted uh, for the demolition and removal of that. Uh, you as the commissioners upheld the order as handed out by Steve which gave a deadline date of May the 30th. Uh, Steve went by the property earlier today. We have not seen any advanced cleanup or ongoing since the packet presentation that I put together with those photos that are included for you. Uh, so basically to summarize, uh, Mr. Flynn uh, removed the center portion of the home as it burned, but the two end caps, the existing open garage, and the portion that he added on to the house, those two portions remain. So he did partially try to do some of the work uh, as required by the board, but the ultimate ruling and the order was for the entire home to be demoed and removed. That has not been met. So what we are requesting and asking of you uh, is for the allocation of $25,000 for us to seek demo bids uh, and do due process to try to clean up the nuisance activity, uh, solid waste, uh, any debris that would be on the property uh, for cleanup of the site. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer, or Steve can. All right, thank you, Bradley. Uh, gentlemen, any questions on this item? Uh, C has the ability to move dirt. Apparently so, yes. Uh, to our understanding, and this is important, and I want to say this up front, neither Steve nor myself have been on to the property since the ruling was handed out. Uh, so what photos we were able to collect were from the right-of-way, from the road. I have had correspondence with several of the neighbors. To our understanding, uh, there was a couple of days where equipment was rented after the ruling and the deadline date was handed out. Uh, those, to my understanding, were done through Sunbelt Rentals. Uh, he rented a piece of equipment, a couple of containers from Republic. Uh, that led to the point of what that would be there. During that time when the equipment was rented out, that's when the dirt moving went to happen. Now, I think that the dirt was moved in certain capacities to act as a fence. Uh, rumors are also that some of the debris has been dumped in the back of the property. Once again, can't verify any of that. Haven't been on the property. Uh, if this is granted and if bids are sought, we would certainly seek out a administrative warrant to go onto the property for those validations to see what is actually the scope behind the house. Uh, if it's in fact buried, that may be a bigger concern uh, to there. Uh, the money request for the dollar amount that we are looking at is because the amount of solid waste and debris that is on the property is far beyond what would normally just be the standard foundation of a house. So uh, the last I had been owned to the property a couple of years ago, it was widespread. So I do think the solid waste capacity is gonna eat up a lot more of our disposal costs than what we would just for a regular home. So I'm hoping to be well under that amount, but the reason for the request is so that we do not have to come back before you to ask for more money, at least at that point. That's the reason for the added cost amount to there. Okay, thank you, Bradley. Any other questions? JR, we had some veil thread of, of uh, coming back due to some ordinance numbers that maybe wasn't quite right or any of that has that taken place or we seem to be good to go here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we're good to go. The, uh, uh, if you recall, he was the the defendant was represented by Alan LaCroix, and they they made some talk of appealing to Superior Court. That time's expired, and no appeal took place. So we're fine. Okay. Other questions, comments? Here, none. This item will remain on decision. Thank you, gentlemen.
brings us item number seven, reports. Uh, I ask you to, to forward any reports you have from other boards and commissions and other activities that you wish to Madam Clerk so they can be presented in our uh, package for our regular meeting. Other items uh, for discussion, I'll remind you potentially some uh, possibly August, uh, late August, uh, we may schedule some discussions for these ARP projects and funds once we get some rules and some ideas together. I'd encourage you to give some thought uh, or if you've had comments from other folks about, well, you ought to be doing this or you ought to be doing that, uh, make a few notes and uh, we, we need to be discussing those at the proper time. Uh, as always, don't litter. I, you know, I see uh, constantly stuff blowing out of the back of pickup trucks. Uh, uh, I don't know why folks think uh, I can throw my trash in the back of the truck and it'll stay there. Maybe they don't think that, but it doesn't stay there because I see it blowing out of the truck all the time. Uh, so I would remind everybody to please keep your trash contained and uh, don't throw it out and pick some up if you... We'll do that as well. Spay and neuter your pets. Adopt a pet from the animal services folks. We've got uh, an adoption event uh, taking place on Friday, July 30th and Saturday, July 31. I would uh, remind you of those dates. If you're looking for a, a cat or dog, looks like it uh, might be a good, good time to look for one. And uh, we've got some birthdays. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Carswell has a birthday in a few days on the 11th. That's yeah. incorrect. I stopped having those last year. <laughs> <laughs> and another fellow a little bit later on has got a birthday, so we'll, we'll just keep that in mind. All right, we do have a need for a closed session today uh, to discuss threatened and pending litigation, uh, to preserve the attorney-client privilege, to discuss economic development matters, to discuss contractual matters, and to discuss personnel matters. And so uh, I will entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to NCGS 143.3, 1811A, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and invite Nate Hall, Rhonda Lee, and Alan Wood to join us uh, in closed session. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Abley. And we'll take just a couple minutes and convene in closed session. Mr. Chairman, can I have a point of personal privilege before we go? Mr. Manager, I want to, to again commend our animal services staff. I think everybody on this board is aware that, that my dog Jasper, uh, something happened to him over the weekend, but our staff, uh, they found him. He's, he's almost dead, but they found him and the staff did exactly what they were supposed to do, and that dog is back home in his little bed this afternoon, drugged up and not feeling so well, but uh, I, I just want to commend our staff again. They're just excellent everything that they do thank you mr chairman was that a 4-0 vote to go in closed session just for clarity uh, raise your hand please <laughs> yes ma'am that was a 4-0 vote <laughs> either the first or the second time <laughs> i'm not sure I, I took that vote and i'm sure you know that thank you very much we'll recess for just a moment and we'll be in closed session